Yo and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector, and happy Tuesday. Yesterday was a holiday for me, so no work. I just hung out at the house. Uh, so today's video, today's video has been a long time coming. And it's taken me a long time to get here where I'm ready to make this video and talk about this publicly and openly and <clears throat> go through what I've been wrestling with over the last little bit and having conversations with my wife, my friends, etc., on what does the end of the story look like for my hobby, for my collecting. In the past, I have never defined it. I have never thought there, there is an end. I mean, I'm just gonna collect in perpetuity forever. Why, why would I ever stop? And the older I get, <laughs> the more I think about, I'm thinking about retiring from work and, you know, those types of things down the road, right? Not tomorrow or anything. And so naturally it's gotten me thinking about what is the end of my hobby look like as I'm thinking about what is, how do I get ready for the end of my career? And it, it really hit me in terms of a way to explain this that might make sense to some of you. And some of you are going to be poo-pooing this, being like, no way, you know, I'm never quitting and this and that. And, and I'm not, it sounds so definitive. It so, sounds so finite and, and it's not necessarily, but I think that goals are super important. Certainly in the hobby, it's important to have goals. And let me explain. When I meet with a client as a financial planner, I sit down with someone for the first time and the first thing I want to try to figure out about them is what are their goals? What are their financial goals? Because if they can articulate that and I can write them down and you can go, okay, pen to paper, this is what we want to do. This is the time horizon in which we want to do it. It becomes a lot easier to achieve. It becomes a lot easier to plan for and to allocate resources to to make that happen. And if it's important enough to the person, they're gonna recognize that and see that. And yep, that's really important to us to send our kids to college or to retire with a certain amount of income or whatever it might be. It's And they go, okay. And then you just work backwards. Most of it's just math, figuring out, okay, if you wanna retire on this date with this much money, we need to be putting away X dollars between now and then to make that happen, right? Seems simple enough. There's retirement planning 101. But there's a lot of nuance to that. And it is it's it is that simple, and yet it's not that simple. But when it comes to collecting, having goals uh, is, I think, super important because it keeps you focused. It keeps you from getting distracted. Uh, it, it keeps other things from getting in the way. And for me, it I, I've been struggling with how to define what that is. What do I want out of this hobby ultimately down the road in the future? And so I've been kind of churning on that for a little while during my hiatus from buying a little bit. Uh, not completely because I do have some cards to show off today that I got, which I will explain in a minute. So you will get to see some cards. But I think this is an important thing for discussion. It's an important for me to vocalize this. It's important for me to kind of put this down on tape, so to speak, and, and get it in the record so that I hold myself accountable to that and kind of go, okay, this is what you said. And what's funny about when I'm meeting with clients uh, and, and talking about their financial goals, those can change. Like life throws things, throws wrenches in all the time that might change what your goals are, but you need to have goals as a, as a jumping off point. And then you, again, they might change down the road. Goals need to have a few attributes to them. They, they need to be high, but achievable. You've probably heard that if you've read any, you know, uh, self-help books or leadership 101, set high, but achievable goals. And that's absolutely true. So you have to have a goal that's going to make, it's going to stretch you. That's going to make you work hard. That's going to make you um, kind of recognize different parts of your personality that you might not have recognized before. All these different things. You want to stretch yourself. High, but achievable. Meaning, uh, 
getting a Honus Wagner T206 is not achievable for me. It's just not, you know, unless I win the lottery, that's just not going to happen. And so that shouldn't be on my goals list. You know, that shouldn't be something that I strive for because it's just an unattainable goal. It would just make me frustrated if that's a goal and I can't ever do it. Then what's the point of having it as a goal? So high but achievable goals. I have tons of projects that I work on constantly, various different things from autographs to slabbed vintage cards to rookies and you name it, right? A bunch of Hall of Famer stuff. And that's where my my joy really is. And so your goal has to ha also be something that will bring you joy because if you get there and then you're just kind of unsatisfied with it, then why make that a goal if <laughs> if it's not going to be something you're proud to accomplish? And so to that end, I've kind of gone, okay, what does that look like for me? What is, again, grinding on that. And for me, with all these projects, I have this master list of, like, if I could get all these things, this, it's a spreadsheet. It's just a spreadsheet with every card that I would like to add to my collection to really kind of say, I'm done. That is a complete collection to me. That is everything I could ever want out of the baseball card hobby would be defined by what I would have accomplished at that point. And that includes all the four decades set cards and 300 great baseball cards by Mike Payne projects and some autograph projects and home, uh, not home run, <laughs> hall of famer stuff, different things that I've put down on this list that are important to me. And everybody, that's the great thing about the hobby. Everybody was going to have, would have their own list if they did this. And what, what, what's important to me? What do I care about? What cards do I like? And you, you can make a list. It might be a really long list, but mine is 977 cards. That's it. 977 cards. And you say, well, that's not very many. That's like a complete top set. And then a little bit, you know, <laughs> one, one complete top set worth of cards. But these are very specific cards, obviously. Uh, cards that fit into different projects that I'm working on. Some of which are going to be very difficult to find and can, uh, will, will take a long time. So the goal also has to have a pursuit to it that makes any sense. It's got to be high and achievable. It's got to take some sacrifice to get there. And, and there's got to be some time to let you get there. If your goal was to lose 30 pounds by tomorrow, that's just silly because you don't have enough time to lose 30 pounds. So for me, I'm, I'm kind of targeting the next 12 years, <laughs> which sounds crazy, but it's kind of, when you break it down, it'll make sense. First of all, I'll be 60 in 12 years. I'm 48 now, so I'll be 60. And I'll have been doing this hobby uh, in 12 years for like 55 years by that time, 54 years, something like that, something crazy. So over 50 years, which is a long time to do anything. <laughs> and so I'll be like, okay, that's probably going to be good. And I, when I broke down the 977 cards, again, like I said earlier, have a goal, and then it's just math. It's really true. I broke it down. I said, well, that means I need to get about 81 cards a year on my list, and that equates to about seven cards a month, which seems reasonable. That seems like something I could do is to find seven cards a month that I want to get. There, obviously, there'll be months I get more than that and kind of get me ahead, and then there's months where the cards are a little bit more expensive and I won't be able to get as many in any given month or maybe one card in three months because it's so expensive and it just takes that much of my resources to do that. So you got to kind of, it's just an average of seven cards a month. Again, very reasonable, seems like. So if you, again, if you break down, I want a million dollars at retirement and I've got 20 years to do it. How much do I need to save a month to have a million dollars at retirement? Just, right? That's the same thing here. And so that's allowed me to really feel great about what I'm going to be doing. A lot of people are probably asking a lot of questions like, uh, what about other stuff? And, you know, this and that and the other. You're, if you have a financial goal, it doesn't mean you don't do anything else financially during that time. 
in trying to achieve that goal. You just say, okay, I'm working on this, so I'm going to do that for sure. And then other things might come along, meaning I might still pick up other various things that I see and I like. But I'm going to try to stay focused on and making sure that I'm addressing this kind of ultimate goal to see the, the collection come to its fruition at the end and make sure I do that in 12 years. So that's, uh, it's kind of fun to, to think about that and to think, some people say that's depressing. I don't want to think about the end of my hobby and this and that. And it, does that mean at the end of the 12 years that I just sell everything? No, not necessarily. I don't know. Um, I wish I could tell you. Depends on where I'm at in life and what's going on. And might I have to sell things before that? Yeah, if I got terminally ill tomorrow, guess what? Goals go out the window. I'm selling everything. It's all leaving. And I'm getting that cash from my family. So again, like I said, there are always wrenches that can be thrown into the plan. But I think everybody should have a plan and should have a goal. Um, and everybody's is going to look different. But it's funny when I meet with clients and they say, well, what are your goals? And they don't have any. And they just say, I just want to have as much money as I can. I'm like, well, what is that? Hard to plan for that. Like, okay, uh, how are we going to do that? Just save? I mean, and, and that I've been wondering, I've been having the, like I've had projects that I've been working on, no doubt, throughout my entire hobby career. But to have a, wow, I really want to get here ultimately. This is where I ultimately want to get with my collection. This is ultimately what I would love to have and feel like I have a complete collection for me, for what I like. So that's it. Uh, I would love to hear what you think down below. And if I haven't answered something that is going through your mind, ask me, you know, uh, um, I probably have thought about it. I just may not be saying it here on this video. So to that end, I need 977 cards. I've got four of them here. I've already counted these, so this doesn't reduce the number any by nine, but it's 977 as of what I have in this house today, in the room today. So let's uh, flip this around and I will uh, show you what I got. Hang on. All right, so four cards to show. Uh, these are a deal. And again, I said I, I'm not buying anything, but th this was a deal that came up that I that I really had to do. The, the price was too good. And I do have some money kind of basically YouTube revenue I can spend on cards, uh, stuff like that. So I, I do have some money coming in that's literally hobby money. And so I, I'm, I'm using that for cards, but it's not a ton. So it's not like I can go out and spend normally, but I can buy the occasional things. And this is a deal that I did on uh, Instagram, actually. Guy reached out, had some cards that he thought I might be interested in. And sure enough, there were some that I really wanted. And so we struck a deal and all that is done. So the first one is this Lou Brock here, 1963 tops. Uh, let's see. I wonder if there's a way. Ooh, let's do that. Let's just get it full frame here. It's a little bigger. There we go. All right. Uh, 1963 tops. Lou Brock. Second year Lou Brock. Great card. Uh, very difficult and high grade in terms of not difficult to find again, but expensive. And so this PSA 5 was just fine for me. That's a perfect grade for my collection for what I like. And it's a really nice looking 5. I mean, it's a beautiful card obviously corner issues down here but very pretty and look at the back gorgeous that's good for me uh next up is this card 1960 tops 59 world series game four we've got uh gil hodges hitting the game winning homer so this is a new addition to the four decade set since Hodges is a new Hall of Famer, and I don't suspect that I'll have to add a ton of cards going forward because I think the Veterans Committee's, you know, like as they add new guys, there's going to be some cards that get added, so the goal will change a little bit, but I don't expect it to be, you know, just this tsunami of new cards that I'm going to want to get. But I got this Gil Hodges 1960 tops. I got this only in a three just because it was like 20 bucks. And I'm like, okay, I'll just take the three just to have the card. It's definitely off center and 
some printing issues with it, but overall, it's still a Gil Hodges slabbed up. I'll take it. And then the last one is this beauty right here. 1953 tops. Love this set. Uh, it's such a gorgeous set. This is a PSA 5 of Hoyt Wilhelm. And again, just a few cards every once in a while. You know, the 50 stuff is becoming more and more and more expensive all the time, even for the kind of second tier Hall of Famers like Hoyt Wilhelm. So just been grabbing those as I, as we go uh, when I can and when I, when I find them. So that is it for today. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for listening to my diatribe earlier about my collecting goals and kind of in game and, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. So follow on the journey. I'm not going anywhere. It's going to be, take me a long time to get there. So no need to fear. Uh, I'll be around for a long time. So we'll catch you guys soon. Keep collecting.